Welcome back to the watch list. I'm Caroline Woods. The wildfires in eastern Canada and the resulting smoke are highlighting the global risk from wildfires. Joining me to talk about that is Tim Sheehy, CEO and director of Bridger Aerospace. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. I know you were on back with Nicole uh, when you went public via SPAC earlier this year, but you're a former Navy SEAL, a pilot, quite the impressive resume. Great to have you here with us. Thanks for having me back. So I'd love to get an update because I know you sent your entire super scooper fleet to uh, help in Canada. Uh, that smoke has reached New York City yesterday and the day before. We were back to masking because it was so bad. So I can only imagine, uh, you know, what it was actually like in Canada. Uh, how is that effort going? How how is your team? And uh, what's the status of these fires? Well, thanks for your support. There, they're going to be with us for quite a while. You know, the eastern. Uh, uh, North American wildfires have a little bit of a different complexion than those we're used to in the western U.S. And of course, those living on the eastern seaboard are, are experiencing this uh, for the first time for most of them. Uh, it's something that's very normal for us western communities out here in Montana, California, and Oregon. Um, but, you know, the, the, the eastern wood, is, it, it's thicker, it's harder, it's wetter. Those fires can be a lot harder to put out because when they get in those those old growth trees, um, you know, you can douse it in fire. Uh, you can douse that fire in water for, you know, minutes and hours and that fire will still come back with a little bit of sun and wind. So uh, these fires are here to stay for a bit and uh, we plan to be there as long as it takes. I have to say, I've seen the memes on Instagram that now that the smoke has hit New York City, maybe something will be you know, something bigger, you know, more global will be done about uh, actually combating the reasons behind them. But how much of this has to do with a shortage of aerial firefighting resources? Uh, that's a significant factor. Globally, what we're seeing is is wildfires are increasing. It's just you know, the trend line is up and to the right uh, every year. Uh, Europe had their worst fire year on record just last year. This year is Canada's worst fire year. Uh, Scotland is currently today under extreme wildfire danger. Uh, we've got parts of, of the East Coast that are under extreme wildfire danger. So we're seeing uh, conditions globally that are that are uh, pretty unprecedented, and it's being exacerbated by a number of factors, not the least of which is uh, more people are moving into wildfire prone areas, and that's all laid against the backdrop of we don't have national, local, or international infrastructure that's sufficient to quickly deploy and combat these fires. When you think about an urban setting with fire stations, we've got a fire station in every street corner that's manned 24-7 with brand new million dollar bright shiny fire trucks. And uh, how often do they go out and fight a fire? Not very often, but they're ready to go when needed. Uh, globally, our aerial wildland firefighting apparatus is, is a, a fraction of that size when compared to the scope of the threat. And we're now seeing that every year where we don't have enough air assets to get to these fires quickly and put them out um, as soon as they start. It's a lot easier to put out a fire when it's five acres or 10 acres than when it's a million acres. So um, I think we're going to continue to see the strained uh, supply in this marketplace. And, um, you know, it's, it's an important mission. We're honored to do it. But uh, it's going to be it's going to be a busy few years ahead. And I think it's important to know that obviously wildfires have so much more of an impact on just our health with the smoke. I mean, economies are losing billions of dollars as things shut down. There's lost pay for workers. There's obviously medical costs associated with it. So tell us what you're doing at Bridger to really kind of change the dynamic here. You're absolutely right. You know, everyone looks at the immediate cost of the burn. And I believe, especially in the U.S., for too long, we, we focused on the cost of suppression. And our, our approach to wildfire suppression has been, let's do it as cheaply as possible. And let's not send uh, all the assets needed until we actually think they're needed, which unfortunately is usually by the time the fire is already out of control. Um, but then the second, third, fourth order effects after these fires are the economic devastation of those communities. Uh, the economic impact of having thousands of residents evacuate, abandon their homes. Uh, just recently, State Farm pulled insurance out of California, saying California homes were no longer insurable due to the wildfire risk. You know, that starts impacting mortgages. And for many people, their entire life financial plan is tied up in their in their home and their mortgage. That, that's the American dream is, is your home is is your crown jewel. So, uh, you know, the second and third order effects, not the least of which, of course, is also health. Uh, smoke inhalation uh, is a huge health factor. So uh, what we're doing, of course, number one, as you see on the screen there, is we have a fleet of purpose built aircraft uh, from our civilian surveillance aircraft that do infrared mapping uh, to try to identify fires earlier and more accurately. We fly command and control aircraft that coordinate the response of sometimes dozens of assets onto a single fire. Uh, and then, of course, our flagships, the CL-415 EAF super scoopers you see there that actually suppress the fires. So um, taking the military close air support model 
that I used heavily uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan and applying it to this public safety mission of wildfire. And then also weaving in uh, technology that uh, was extremely beneficial to us during the, the global war on terror. That's surveillance, that's infrared, that's uh, online mapping, that's distributing information faster in a more holistic manner. Uh, we have a, a large software team here that works tirelessly to develop uh, better information products so that citizens, first responders, and government decision makers can access better information about these wildfires in real time and then make better decisions about how to address that faster. Tim, you came public at the start of the year, as I said, via SPAC. Obviously not the easiest time to enter the public markets. Obviously shares have taken a hit, but you're up 4.5% today, up about 28% this month. So seeing a nice boost to shares. How has access to the public markets enabled you to grow and what are your expansion plans? Well, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, we went public during a public market ice age, no question about it. But, um, you know, we knew that sailing into it. It wasn't a question. We saw the storm and decided, you know, we're going to stick to our plan. Uh, you know, we didn't do this back for the cash to get out of it. We, we, we realized that our growth plans were going to be best served with a public currency. Uh, so we, we've acquired a lot of aircraft the last few years and built our company from the ground up. Um, and now we're, we're turning our attention to, to some M&A to grow globally, uh, as well as investing uh, additionally into our technology base. So. Uh, we're going to use that currency to, to grow our fleet base, just more aircraft and more geographical coverage. Uh, we're very North American centric now. We're looking at expanding into other geographies uh, and, and also welcoming other companies uh, into our fold that uh, our industry really needs a lot of um, a lot of investment uh, globally. And, and we're going to use our currency to do that. And just quickly, I want to ask, because you actually fly those super scoopers that you were talking about. We've seen some footage of the actual planes. What's that like, especially over fires? Uh, it's a tremendous experience. It's very rewarding. You know, sometimes you fly over homes and, and you'll see on top of a barn or someone's house, they'll have taped thank you or they'll put big signs out. You know, it feels great to be able to come in and, and protect people's farms, ranches, communities. Um, but flying these aircraft uh, is an incredibly rewarding experience. It's also a lot of fun, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a great time flying those aircraft. And being able to, to fly a plane like this, uh, sometimes you'll get 80 to 100 scoops and drops in a day. If that water source is nice and tight to that fire, um, you can get in and you can really put a hurt on that fire. Um, and, and, and have a great impact. So it's a lot of fun to fly them. It's a rewarding mission. And coming from my background in the military, uh, you know, I'm used to being uh, in the thick of things and, and being in the action. So this is no different, and, and I love it. Well, a lot of people appreciative for the work that you do. Thank you for your service. Best of luck to your team. I hope everybody stays safe. Tim Sheehy, CEO and Director, Bridger Aerospace. Thanks so much for joining the show. Thanks for your support.